but since Kobe's death, I've had my eye on Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Wade was in the news lately after becoming the first person to get a statue built outside the Miami Heat Arena. Now, I have not seen or heard anything about Wade's secret rise to power and how Kobe Bryant's death, his son's sexuality, and his wife are all connected. Since Kobe's death, I noticed something peculiar that let me know Dwayne was up next. Let's look into the conspiracy files. Dwayne Wade. A basketball icon and cultural force was born in Chicago, Illinois on January 17, 1982. From a young age, it was evident that Wade possessed an innate talent for the sport that would later become a piece of his life's calling. Raised in the challenging environment of the south side of Chicago, Dwayne faced obstacles that only fueled his determination to rise above adversity. The defining moment of his early career came in 2003 when the Miami Heat selected Dwayne Wade as the fifth overall pick in the NBA draft. This marked the beginning of a transformative journey that would see him emerge as one of the league's most electrifying and clutch players. Let's look at a brief timeline of Dwayne's personal life. A new handler. Dwayne was with his high school sweetheart before coming across the path of Gabrielle Union. An LA Times article highlights Dwayne and Gabrielle's path well. Wade won his first NBA championship in 2006, and they met back in while co hosting a sponsored 2007 Super Bowl party, but didn't start dating until three years later, following both having had divorces. During a split, Dwayne has a son with Aja Matoya. In 2012 and 2013, Miami won back-to-back -back championships. Various time conflicts forced Wade and Union to split in January 2013. But in December, Wade proposed to her and they got married August 30th, 2014 in Miami. Wade and Union welcomed a child in 2018. Now, that you are caught up on Wade and his handler, let's put the pieces together. After Wade begins to be a household name, winning championships, getting acclaim, and of course making more money, his offer to get to the next level presents itself in full force. Remember earlier, he already has a handler and a person in the industry to keep him in line if he becomes too problematic. Everyone in the industry does. Most times it is a publicist, manager, or someone close in their camp, if it is not their insignificant other. Now fast forward to 2020. After news of Kobe Bryant spread, a world of emotions were felt round the world as one of sport's most beloved athletes was taken in an accidental plane crash. The NBA provided news press of the aftermath and an unusual person was a part of the normal crew. If you have ever followed the NBA during that time, you know that Dwayne was never an announcer or had spoken publicly frequently outside of when he played. Questions immediately rang wild when I noticed him as a speaker that night as he was not connected to Kobe in any way special outside of normal competition. As he sat with the normal NBA on TNT cast of Shaq Ernie, Kenny, and Chuck, Dwayne was the first to tell his story about Kobe Bryant. D. Wade, um, when did you first meet him? Uh, first time I, I met him was my rookie season in the NBA. I've, um, I've been a big, my three favorite players was Michael Jordan, Allen Iverson, and Kobe Bryant. Ten games into my rookie season, we played the Lakers here on this court. Um, Shaq, Carl Malone, Gary Payton, and Kobe Bryant. I uh, I told Kobe the story um, in 
2016 at the All-Star Game when he allowed us, and myself, Chris Paul, and Carmelo to host um, a, a thank you dinner for him. And I told him in that game, in the fourth quarter, I got my opportunity to guard him for the first time. And it was in transition, and I was scared as hell. And I remember thinking to myself, you watched him play over and over, you know his move, you know his move. And I just guessed right, and I ripped him. And I remember thinking, this don't matter if I don't finish this basket. And I came down, I hit the floater, and I just thought to myself, I cannot believe what just happened. I'm calling all my boys back at the crib and let them know that I just ripped Kobe Bryant. And that was my first opportunity. He, he don't remember that moment because it wasn't a big moment. But for me, it meant the world. Notice the beautiful pin that Dwayne is sporting on his suit jacket. Have you ever seen him wear such a dazzling style? And on a night of alleged tragedy, what significance would this stand for? This would be answered later, as we would see Dwayne step more into the spotlight after. Now, let's examine his child's identity story and how that story became a key ingredient in a much more sinister plot. On February 11th, 2020, only 15 days after Kobe's passing, Dwayne's then son Zion decided that he wanted to be referred to as Zaya. This was the start of a campaign that would help push Dwayne's national brand, but not only that. This was also the start of the promotion of the elite's agenda. And of all the places he could have opened up about this, he goes to our favorite child expert, Ellen DeGeneres. Let's listen to the interview. Um, first of all, I just, I think it's what every, you know, every parent should be is what you're being right now, which is unconditionally loving your child and supporting you. your child in whoever they are. I mean, that's, there are so many parents that are just, oh, you're not going the way I imagined or wanted you to be and freak out. And you're so loving and supportive of Zaya and, and what a special child she is. Yes, she is, she is. Thank you so much for that. Um, first of all, me and my wife, my wife, Gabrielle, um, Union, we are, we are proud, when I say proud, we are proud parents um, of a child in the LGBTQ plus uh, community. And we're proud allies as well. Um, and we, we take our, our roles and our responsibility as parents very seriously. Um, so when our, when our child comes home with a question, when our child comes home with an issue, when our child comes home with anything, it's our job as parents to listen to that, to give them the best information that we can, the best feedback that we can. Um, and that doesn't change because sexuality is now involved in it. So once Zaya, 12-year-old, came home, um, and first Zion, everybody, I don't know if everyone knows, originally named Zion, Zion born um, as a boy, came home and said, hey, uh, so I want to talk to you guys. Um, you know, I think going forward, I'm ready to live my truth. And I want to be uh, referenced as she and her. Uh, I would love for you guys to call me Zaya. And so internally, now is our job to one, go out and get information, to reach out to every relationship that we have. My wife reached out to everybody on the, the uh, cast of Pose. Um, and we're just trying to figure out as much information we can to make sure that we give our child the best opportunity to be you know, her best self. Yeah, I mean, I would think that it's one thing. It's one thing to, to have this at home, but n knowing that she's going to be out in the world because yeah. you're a public figure, and even if you weren't, she's going to school, and to want to be protective and to make sure she's safe, yes. um, that must be a scary thing because it's one thing for you to love her and, ex and, and your wife to love her, but that must, you just want everyone to love her the same way. Exactly. And once Zion, once Zion came home and said, hey, I'll, you call me Zion, I'm ready to take on this, um, I looked at it and said, you are a leader. You are a leader and it's our opportunity to allow you to be a voice. Right now it's through us because she's 12 years old, but eventually it will be through her. Right. You see, even though this may happen, the probabilities are not that high. When you are constantly reinforcing the confusion, blending, or idealizations of gender to children, you are creating a confusing dynamic and not allowing the natural progression of life and a child's sexuality 
to form. This agenda has been around for a while, and Dwayne was not the first. He just happened to be up next. Fast forward three years' endorsements, constant talks about his new daughter, a surrogate baby, new deals, and rumors of infidelity start to emerge. But nothing culminated more than what was to come for Dwayne in 2024. niggas back in place did you see what i'm getting at flipping the, the wealth from the the black entertainers man these caucasian that's in power the elite they're not gonna let these black folks keep all that money slowly but surely they're gonna they're gonna strip them down to a, a some amount and then they're gonna have that the mark of the beast and that's what they're gonna be subjected to and every month that's what they're gonna get in their account all these millions and on top of millions they're gonna they're gonna stop that that's what the nfl and nba is all about Shaq got out. He saw it coming. What did Shaq do? He said, I got to get out this shit, but it don't matter because he sold out too. So he he can't he can run, but he can't hide. He's too damn big to hide. But he got out because he saw it coming. But still, they're gonna get his account too. The only way if if Shaq right now go to the bank and try to withdraw a million dollars in cash, you know the elite will kill him. Y'all know they can't do that, right? They gotta continue using the black card. Now they'll let them take out a thousand here, a thousand there. But if they go take out, they try to take out huge chunks of money, they will off them. They can't do that. They know being a part of the brotherhood, they, they, they're disallowed to do that. So that's why they can use their black card. And they can't use their black card on a lot of survival gear. Y'all know that? I'm telling y'all how Hollywood get down, man. Sodomites running this world. If they, if Shaq right now go to getting a lot of camping gear, food supply, one of the elites gonna have the booty go to him and say, "Why are you buying all this survival stuff, man?" I'm telling you, that's how they roll. They can't be part of that. They just have to accept it. They watch these people with money like hawks. They they, they got RFID in their house, RFID in their car. They can't do nothing without um, without the elites watching them. So, you really want to be famous? That's what you got to go through. But these guys have come to re the, 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 the realizing what they have done, and they, they, they get sad to go up with the spirit on them and say, you can't be forgiven for what you've done. And they go crazy. That's why they stay high all the time. That's why these women, they get in these freak acts. They have these orgies. They try men. They try women. They try to escape it. And no matter how many houses they buy, no matter how many cars they buy, they realize one thing. They can never get back their soul. They know that the only way out of the devil worshipping is death. Now, although Wade was in the news last year about rumors that he was cheating on his wife with men and that they were scheduled to get a divorce, it has not been confirmed. Once again, D. Wade is not the first and will not be the last of entertainers who sell their morals for fame, fortune, and glory. Dwayne's three-year campaign of his son's gender identity change paid off well, as he would finally reap the benefits of allegiance to the higher-ups. On January 15th, 2024, Wade announced a donation that he was giving to his alma mater, Marquette University. He donated a whopping $3 million that focused on three areas. First, it will help extend the Tragil Wade Johnson's summer reading program. Second, the gift will also establish the Wade Scholars to benefit low-income students. Two students per year will receive full room and board scholarships for their first two years at MU. Lastly, planned expansion of the Athletic and Human Performance Research Center, which will include a new practice facility for the men's basketball team. Later that evening, he would receive news to appear at the Miami Heat game for a presentation. Uh, I think we're going to put a bobblehead like out there next year will be a statue eight feet tall. Eight feet tall. We wanted to make sure it was bigger than Shaquille O'Neal. It'll be the first statue ever that they'll be here on Biscayne Boulevard, Dwayne, and it is forever 
for the greatest player in the history of this game, man. You know I love you. Next year, everybody right here will be a statue. And I want to thank the Harrison family. They're the ones that came up with the idea. So it's going to be great. Good luck to you, my man. And here, you get to get the Bible head for a while, OK? Just play with it. You take care. Pat, thank you very much. What does it mean to you? Did you notice anything odd about Dwayne's appearance? Let's look at his hands. See, still promoting the confusion agenda, of the higher-ups. The elites use these celebrities that people worship as pieces to help push their views and mentalities on the youth. Once you can destroy the youth, you can capture the future. His alignment with Gabriel Union, the sexuality sacrifice of his son Zion, and his continual dedication to the elite's cause granted Duane a piece of earthly immortality. As he continues to rise, you will also see outlandish and shocking truths become exposed. It's part of the package deal you sign up for to be a part of the Brotherhood. Which popular figure do you want to see next? Leave a comment below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel.